I'm very glad to have you here, sir. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. I always love to get up early in the morning. That's what he says. <laughs> so do we. So do we. That's our, that's our system. Sure we do. Yeah, that's our mojo. We do want to talk about uh, the closures, the school closures, the escalation of job action going into week two for the teachers. Here are the schools uh, of districts that are affected today. You can get a full list of the week if you go onto our website or go to news1130.com. But let's dive right in here. Why are we in this position? Well, the reality is that uh, we're not close at the bargaining table when it comes to some of the significant elements. Um, there's quite a difference in salary offers between what we've offered and what the BCTF is looking for. The government and BCPC, the employer, have made some significant moves. Uh, we reduced the term. We were looking for a 10-year agreement. We now have agreed to a six-year agreement, which in effect is five years because we're one year into the expired agreement already. We moved on salary. What is so unrealistic about the, uh, the, the wage desires for the uh, BC teachers saying 15.9% over four years when you look at the idea of salaries all across Canada and seeing BC on the lower end of that scale for our teachers, what is so unaffordable well, and unrealistic? The, the problem with the stats can results and even they say be careful how you look at those because when you look at per student investment and all of those things, you have to look at the whole package. When you look at salaries, you have to look at benefits as well. But what the difference is, is at the end of the four-year term, we're looking at a 21% lift uh, based on what the BCTF is looking for. That's unaffordable in this current economic climate, and it's out of step with the rest of the public sector unions. You know, we've had unprecedented labor peace with other unions uh, when you look at the agreements that we signed just a little over a week ago, a tentative agreement with the HEU, uh, which is uh, within the zone that we've been with all public sector unions. So that's the challenge. But what we did as well for the teachers is we put a $1,200 signing bonus if we can get an agreement by the end of June. That's our goal, has been from the beginning. With this, as you said, the two sides being so far apart, it appears to be at a stalemate that is echoing longer than most of the public sector is comfortable with, fair to say. At what point do you go, okay, we both have to come to the table with our best possible offer and go into binding arbitration? We've said that from the get-go as far as the employers are concerned. We're saying let's be at that table 24-7. I would love it if the BCTF was to say, you know what, we're going to stop the strike action. We're going to stop putting children and families in the middle of this dispute. We're going to lock ourselves in a room for as long as it takes to get an agreement. That's what we've wanted to do Why since June. They? What's the excuse? Well, you know, I'm not going to speak for the BCTF. What's clear is we've had this climate of acrimony between the teachers union and governments and uh, if you look at the history it's not just our government it's been previous NDP government social credit before that so we've had this climate and the only common denominator is the BCTF but that said I mean I I think parents want us to stop the blame game well you said they said let's get at the table let's keep the kids in school we're coming to the end of the year it's graduation time huge important time for most young people that are graduating. So let's get at the table and let's find a deal. This week's going to be very interesting with the Labor Relations Board ruling on the validity of the 10% uh, you know, imposed wage cut uh, on the part of the government for teachers. Uh, what happens if the ruling goes in, in favor of the teachers? What is the next step for the negotiation to, to get uh, you know, a mutually beneficial resolution here? Well, the reality is no matter what happens, we should be at the table bargaining. I mean, the reality is let's get a deal. Um, we feel that if you withdraw services, if you look at every other labor union, the reality is you withdraw services, your pay is affected. Uh, we think that's an appropriate and measured response to this particular action by the BCTF. They don't agree. You know, teachers are still in schools for uh, the, the defined hours, but there are many services they're not doing and the administration has to pick it up. So we think that this response with a 10% decrease, especially now that we have rotating strikes, is a measured and an appropriate response to put equal pressure back on the BCTF to get at the table. At the end of the day, the, the genesis of anything is the only way you're going to get a deal 
Just is to sit at the table and negotiate. Okay. And we've had that difficulty. So the negotiation over money and length of contract, those are big deals, but so many people, so many teachers talking about class composition. Yep. How do you see that loose term actually forming into something that can be agreeable for both sides? Well, we've been willing to negotiate that. <clears throat> I fully recognize having visited a lot of classrooms, seeing composition issues, but our government after the last round and after the, the first judgment on the court case, we put $225 million on the table, $75 million a year to deal with composition alone. The BCTF was not willing to sit at the table with us and talk about how to implement that because they were waiting for the court case. They believe the class size is one of the major issues. We disagree based on everything we've seen in terms of research around the world. Size is not the determination of outcome. Composition is definitely an issue and we are prepared to deal with that. More learning assistance. That 225 million, we hired another 400 learning assistants throughout the province. We hired another 500 teachers with that money. So to suggest that we're not willing to talk about composition is absolutely not correct. Wages, class size, competition, uh, composition, a lot of complex issues with this negotiation. Uh, uh, Education Minister Peter Fassbender, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, later on uh, today on Breakfast Television, BCTF uh, President Jim Eicher will also be joining us and hopefully we can achieve a resolution and get the kids back in school. That's our hope as well. Yeah. Please come back and tell us when uh, it's the good I will. news. We'll come and celebrate together. All right. thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much.